Russian and Colombian drug news, unofficial world records and the return of the weightlifting meme review. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Weightlifting House News Show, the first weightlifting news show of 2021, the only weightlifting news show in the world. Okay, a real quick bit of housekeeping. The first thing, barbells and plates. To all pre-orderers, as you've probably seen on the news, the docks, everything has been absolute carnage getting into both the USA and the UK. But the good news is everything is now here. Everything has arrived in the UK and in the USA, so things will be with you soon. Now, to those of you who need barbells or plates and don't yet have any, we obviously have this batch, which has just arrived. We have more bars and plates arriving in February, and we have a few hundred of the new Weightlifting House barbell that no one has yet seen arriving in March. So we will be very well stocked uh, very soon. So if you need stuff, just hold on a little bit longer. And now the next thing, and this is the most exciting, coaches only, the greatest thing to happen for weightlifting coaches ever. February 27th to 28th, eight lectures by eight of the most interesting, eight of the most successful coaches, uh, researchers, and even world champion delivered to you via Zoom. And they will go far more in depth on interesting topics, useful topics for coaches and athletes than we're ever able to get into on a sort of off-the-cuff type podcast. Tickets will be available at weightliftinghouse.com soon, but they aren't quite available yet. I will drip feed more information as well as who the guest speakers are over the coming weeks. That's coaches only. All right, let's get into some of the PED talk. We have two countries to go through. We have Russia and we have Colombia. Also, very quickly, just because this is the first episode we've done in a few weeks, there are timestamps below. It could end up being quite a long podcast, so do feel free to skip along. If you're watching on YouTube, you can literally just see the sections on the little thing at the bottom. If you're listening on the podcast, timestamps are written in the description. So two things with regards to doping. The first, we're going to head over to Russia. Their four-year ban, which was issued by WADA, has now been reduced to two years. So this two-year ban will prevent Russia as a country having any representation at the next two Olympic Games. The next two Olympic Games being... Tokyo, and then of course 2022, the Winter Olympics. So we're not talking about Paris 2024. This doesn't, however, prevent Russian athletes or individual Russian athletes competing under a neutral flag as neutral athletes. It basically just means that they can't officially compete as as Russians under a Russian flag. Now it seems that part of the reason for for the halving of this four-year sentence down to two years was really just to avoid the incredible legal onslaught that had been employed by the Russian government. The Russian government basically hired as many people as they could, the idea being essentially to to fight and and drain WADA of any power that they had. So by doing this sort of four year down to two year, WADA basically survives and Russia accepts a smaller punishment. Of course, however, many WADA employees were left kind of bemused or baffled uh, at the reduction in the sentence. In fact, Travis Tiger, the CEO of USADA, described it as a weak, watered-down outcome and a catastrophic blow to clean athletes, the integrity of sport, and the rule of law. Now, you can check out all of this at InsideTheGames.com and also at Anti-Doping Science on Instagram, a fantastic account that posts basically everything that comes out with regards to doping, but more specifically as it pertains to weightlifting. So go follow Anti-Doping Science on Instagram. Next, we have Colombia. Now, the chances of Tokyo for Colombia are currently slim for weightlifting. Three athletes from Colombia were all banned at once, and so it now faces a ban as a nation on two different counts. The first count, essentially suspension of up to three years due to three doping violations in a single calendar year. Also, alongside this first count, an additional $50,000 fine is pretty likely for that offence. The second count is that all three of these bans occurred during the Olympic qualifying period, which allows for an outright ban under the new 2020 qualifying rules. These three athletes were banned for the use of the drug boldenone, also used as equipoise, a synthetic derivative of testosterone. So who were these three athletes? The first, Anna Iris Segura, 49 kilo Pan American Games silver medalist, Yeni Sinestera, 55 kilo, 2019 IWF Junior World Silver Medalist, 
and Juan Solis, 81 kilo, silver at last year's Junior Worlds. And so because these three have now been popped, it means that the entire Colombian team is likely to not be able to compete in Tokyo. Let's go through who some of those people are. So this is going to affect Francisco Mosquera, 61 kilo weightlifter, who currently ranks 6 in the world, so he's in a qualifying spot. Luis Mosquera, who ranks in 11th, 67 kilo, one of the fastest weightlifters in the world. Then we have in the 81 kilo category, probably the most underrated Colombian in the world, actually, Santiago Rodelegas. He is ranked in fifth in that 81 kilo category. In fact, we've seen him do 166, 202, he even did 203 as a weight class heavier as well. And then, of course, there's Jonathan Rivas, 96 kilo weightlifter, who's ranked fourth in the world. There are fewer women who this affects in terms of the Colombians who are currently in Olympic qualifying positions, but that's because two of their best are in and amongst these three who've just been popped, so they're not kind of counted as people who are going to miss out because of this, because obviously they should miss out because of this. We have Mercedes Perez, 64 kilo weightlifter. She sits in seventh. And then world champion, who actually sits in fifth, 76 kilo Lady Solis. I have now a quote from Brian Oliver, who obviously is the editor for Inside the Games.biz. He's also done a fantastic episode of the podcast with me at the Weightlifting House podcast, which you can check out. We go into a lot of this sort of stuff. Here's Brian's quote. If ongoing cases from other nations with similar multiple offence problems are closed within the next six months or so, the list of countries banned from Tokyo could grow to seven. Thailand, Egypt, Malaysia, Colombia, Russia, Vietnam, and Romania. Okay, I just remembered, and now that we finish this this drugs part of the podcast, I just remembered to mention there is a 10% off sale at weightliftinghouse.com. Everything is off, so if you want to get this hoodie or this book, or these bits of thumb tape, or um, straps, we've got blue straps, we've got black straps, we've got a bunch of really cool stuff, then head over to weightliftinghouse.com, the link is down below. Over to China, we have to stop in with the goat Lu Zhaozhen, because it's Lu Zhaozhen. He just hit 260 kilos for a double in the back squat, a 140 kilo pow snatch, not a power. I'm not sure if I've ever even seen Lu Zhaozhen do a power. He can go so far below parallel that basically kind of seems like 90% of all of his mobility is below the parallel position, which obviously isn't quite right, but I don't think I've ever seen him hit a true power. This was a pow, it looked pretty good. He then hit a 90 kilo seated strict press, military press type thing with the comment below saying, you know, who can do more or something like that. Now, I can't do more than that. I've done 80 kilos. I might have even done slightly more than that. I was surprised, honestly, this is not to take anything away from Lou. I was surprised that 90 kilos is a weight that he can only do for one rep and not two. He did get a little off balance off that second rep, but even so, he got it for a single and didn't go up. Now, we know that there are 81 kilo weightlifters who can strip press over 100 kilos. Lu Zhaozhen being one of the strongest, I thought would definitely be that guy. And honestly, seated but slightly above the collarbone is not really a more difficult lift than just a standard strip press. So... I was actually kind of surprised by Lou's lack of, of strict press strength there, I suppose. P.S. Looking forward to the hate in the comment section, so thanks for that. Uh, moving over now to Lou De Lin, the other Lou, posted by Zhang Insta. We have 170 kilos in the bench press, which is surprising. The Chinese rarely bench. In fact, they say that you should train the pecs, but you should never do it through this sort of horizontal pressing. You should do it through dips, weighted dips, that sort of thing. He also then hit 180 kilos in the power clean and power jerk, and he looked very good. In fact, that power jerk was was dangerously good, uh, I thought, compared to his split jerk. So that's really exciting. The 180, you know, as you'd imagine, I mean, the guy hang snatches 180. Uh, the pull there was very easy. And then finally from China, uh, a weightlifter that we haven't spoken about much, though, who I have, I guess, covered every now and then over the last three, four years. 89 kilo Liu Jiao Wen doesn't compete internationally particularly, but has won national championships within China. 215 kilo clean and jerk in training. That's one kilo below the, the world standard. There is no world record set yet for that 89 kilo class. Moving over to Taiwan, we have Kuo Sung Chun, world champion, multiple time world record holder, not yet an Olympic champion. Perhaps Tokyo will be the time for her. She just channeled her inner Lu Zhao Jun 120 kilos for a clean and squat jerk. She actually missed the first attempt, came back and made it on a second attempt, and she was pretty pleased. She struck a pose of some sort. So a very nice 120 for her. I think the most we've seen 
from Koi Sung Chun. I'm going to check it very quickly, but I believe it's 146. It's either 146 or 141. Or no, it's 142, I think, actually. Let's just check this very quickly. I know that it was at the Chinese Taipei University Worlds in 2017. Yeah, 142 kilos uh, summer university ad in, in Taiwan. So uh, 142. So this is what, 22 kilos below that somewhere around 50% off, so I guess it's like 86% left for her. All right, back to the, the semi-script that I have in front. South Korea, Seo Hui the 109 kilo weightlifter, just, I guess, kind of really introduced himself a little bit more into someone who's gonna actually be um, a real contender at the Olympics. 180 in the snatch, which is a great lift. I mean, if you compare that to the US guys, you've got someone like Wes Kitts, that's equal to Wes's best ever snatch, and he made it look really good. So 180, he then went and hit 220 in the clean and jerk, which looked great, and then 230 cleaned it, missed the jerk behind, wore straps. I mean, the, the, the rack position was, I mean, he channeled his inner Fernando race with this one. Elbows were down. <laughs> Sorry, Fernando. Uh, I don't know why he had the straps on because it kind of makes that rack position a little bit tougher. His elbows were nowhere near um, high and the bar almost slipped off. But you know what? It looked great and I'm very excited to see Seo Hyup try and push that a little bit further. We then had uh, Sangil Ham at Sangil.ham on Instagram. He's a top memer. He is from South Korea. He does a lot of funny stuff. Like He'll, he'll just do a, a squat with a bar with 40 kilos just balanced on his head. Uh, not touching it like it's an overhead squat, but it's like on it's an on head squat He just hit a 155 kilo strict press. There was no Like knee flexion extension no plantar flexion uh, I mean there was a little bit of a bounce I suppose he sort of unwrapped it a little bit above the collarbone so that he would get a little bit of a stretch reflex down and up But I mean 155 for a strict press is enormous Moving over now to India, we have Gurdeep Singh at Gurdeep Dullet 1995 on Instagram. He is just 26 years of age and he just hit a 200 kilo, I'm gonna call it a splower clean. It's a power clean, but he splits wider than his split jack. You know, like a, he, he what, what's it called? Where you do these sorts of power cleans? I'm totally blanking the name. It's like a starfish. That's what it's called, it's a starfish. Uh, like a, I mean, he starfishes wider than he splits long ways. So it's a 200 kilo splower clean. Then he front squats it and then he jerks it. It looks very easy. He also just hit 222 kilos in the clean and jerk. Also, at 26 years of age, six foot two, he is a national record holder at 177, 225. Over to Iran, we have some enormous clean and jerks. The first half is Gashke, 61 kilo weightlifter. Maybe actually the most competitive. Iranian weightlifter in the world right now. I mean, Ali Davoudi is great, but we've still not really seen him break into the world level medals, I suppose. Uh, Sarab Maradi and, and Kianush aren't really there right now. There are a few 109s, previous world champions, but they've sort of been drowned out since having to move up to 109 from 102. So I think Havas Gashke might be up there. He just went for a 176 kilo world record, unofficial world record attempt. Uh, and he cleaned it and, and just missed a jerk. He made 170 kilos before that. Looked great. Then, actually, there's another Iranian who maybe could be sort of pushing for top Iranian title at the moment as well. Ayub Masavi, 96 kilo weightlifter. He actually snuck the bronze medal in the clean and jerk at Worlds last year, if you remember that. He hit 214 kilos. He just hit 220 kilos. That's, I mean, how many 96s in the world are doing that, really? Hitting 220, even in training that we know of. I mean, it may well be that Anton Pleznoy has done 220 in training, we just don't know. But really, I mean, it's it's Mezzo and it's Tian, and that's kind of it. I mean, there's Yoheni Sakansu, but I just have this feeling he's going to be popped really soon. And I'm not, I'm not trying to call him out, I just have a feeling that Yoheni's going to go down. So, you know, Ayub Musavi kind of sneaking in as a, as a bit of a clean and jerk underdog. Okay, so speaking of Mezzosona, I'm sure you guys either saw the video that I put up uh, a couple of days ago, or you watched the live stream of Mezzo doing this, but Mezzo was going for a new PR in the snatch and the clean and jerk, and he maxed out live on YouTube, and I was able to provide a little bit of uh, commentary as to, as to his career thus far, and he really put on a show for it. I mean, he snatched reasonably well. I think he hit 70, 76 or 78, 
tried 82, tried 83, and to be honest, his strength in the pool was so easily there. Uh, there's just too much loop. He just couldn't hold on to it. The bar went behind him every single time, I think. But in the clean and jerk, he's a lot more consistent. The margin for error is is greater. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's greater. I was, yeah, it's greater. So he he and he made it look amazing. He hit 220 kilos, fantastic. Jumped all the way to 232 kilos, an unofficial world record, a kilo more than Tian Tao's. 231 world record i mean in the grand scheme of things it's it's a kilo less than Ilya did at 94 it's a kilo less than sarab did at 94 um but even so it's a fantastic lift and he absolutely smashed it and he made it look easier than tian tao made his 231 look it's not a competition lift but even so it's really exciting so amazing lifting from mezzo there over in Uzbekistan, Ruslan Nuradinov is doing fantastically well again. He's obviously back from his ban at this point. He just tripled 170 kilos in the snatch. He doubled 175. And then he did a 200 kilo clean plus power jerk plus clean plus power jerk, which is, again, really fantastic. The most we've seen him do internationally, 239 kilos. I think he did 237 in Rio as well, uh, beating Andre Romnow's Olympic record clean jerk of 236 of course Oromo had snatched 200 before that but even so I think what's really funny about this is that behind Ruslan Nuruddinov you can see Akbar Jiraev who is obviously Uzbekistan's shining 109 we've seen him snatch over 190 we saw him clean and jerk 230 even recently we've seen him do that and uh, he must just be thinking to himself now like what on earth is going on I thought I was the guy I was going to be the top Uzbek lifter and then Ruslan Nurudinov returns, and it's going to be a battle. I mean, obviously, we're not going to see Nurudinov at the Olympics because he hasn't qualified, and we will see Jurayev, but they might both go to the Asian champs, <laughs> and Ruslan Nurudinov might be Akbar Jurayev. So I'm really excited to see that showdown. Big news now from a, from a big athlete over in Russia. Alexei Lovchev obviously famously hit the 264 unofficial, well, Official at the time, world record, then he got banned and, and he lost that title. Uh, but he just hit, in training, a no-contact muscle snatch, two sets of four at 125 kilos. That really is lasher levels of, of strength. And actually, he does it maybe with as much ease. We haven't seen Lasher do 125 for a set of four, but I'm sure it could. I've seen him do 120 for a triple like right in front of me, and he, and he looked great. Uh, he then did 190 kilo... I don't know what these are called. It's like a panda pull plus rotation. Like he does the, the, the panda pull, but then he, he externally rotates. So it's almost like he's gone a little bit further. He just doesn't punch out and go under, but he pulls it very high. And then 165 kilos behind the neck for a few sets of four, 325 kilo back squat moving very fast. Alexei Lovchev looks good right now. I don't think we're going to see him really return to, to levels to push Lasher. Honestly, I don't think we'll ever maybe even see Lovchev do 200 to 50 ever again but um but then again 200 to 50 could medal uh at worlds maybe it's certainly medal in the clean jerk I'd have thought another unofficial world record last week comes from Rip Vasu Harev's 81 kilo Latvian weightlifter we've been watching him we've been following him for years but more specifically we've been following him very uh very keenly over the last two months, I'd say. His clean and jerk's been going up kilo by kilo by kilo, and then suddenly 208 kilos. Look, he probably weighed 82, 82 and a half kilos, something like that. But even so, absolutely incredible lift from Rip Vasu Harev's. I mean, when is he finally going to do it? I mean, he's, he's, he's very high up in the 81 kilo category in Europe. He's done wonders at under, you know, under 23s and as a youth and a junior. But when is he finally going to say to the big guns in the 81 kilo class, I'm actually going to contend for the gold. I'm actually someone that you have to really fear and worry. And this 208 kilo lift just maybe announced that. So it's going to be interesting to see how he does at the European Championships against a few of the other 81s in Europe and then at the Olympics in a few months' time. Over in Romania, Loredana Toma, 64 kilo 2000... Well, 63 kilo 2017 world champion, 2000... And 19 kilo, 64 kilo bronze medalist. Just hit 120 kilos for a power clean and jerk. She called it a pow, which is a problem because she clearly now doesn't understand. We we sort of hoped that she was one of the early adopters of pow, a term 
separating power and full. Um, but fortunately, Nat Arem, owner of Hook Grip, came to the rescue and he commented on the post and he said, look, we need to go over this again at the next Pow, 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 Power and Na seminar. Now, I don't know what a Pow, Pow is. I know what a Pow is. I know a Power. I know a Na. What's a Pow, Pow? I'm not so sure. So I might have to attend said seminar also. To France, we now have retired 89 kilo, slowest puller in the world, Red on Minushi, who is really shown that he needs to return, honestly, to the sport with some of these lifts. 200 kilos in the block clean, which is great. 170 block snatch, 180 block snatch. That was posted not by him, but by Power Camp Weightlifting, though he may have done it too. That 180 is one kilo over the world standard in the 89 kilo class. I really hope Red on Minushi decides to return to weightlifting. Great Britain's barbell queen, 64 kilo Sarah Davies, just hit 120 kilos for a power jerk plus split jerk. I don't think I've ever seen a power jerk anywhere close to this kind of weight, which is exciting. It looked comfortable. The split jerk after also looked great. She's what? I mean, she's cleaned 128 now. She's, oh, she's jerked 128 too. So, you know, 130, hopefully around the corner, hopefully at Europeans or Worlds. And when I say Worlds, I mean the Olympics. To Canada now, Alex Bellamar, 81 kilo weightlifter, hit a 9 kilo PR in the block clean to round out 2020 with 196 kilos. And then we have Maud Charon from Canada, also 64 kilo weightlifter, who I just recorded a podcast with, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, she's an amazing person, amazing athlete. Her journey's been really cool, so definitely check that out when it goes up in a couple of weeks' time. She just hit 108 kilos in the block snatch. She did 100 kilos for a double off blocks a few weeks ago. And, I mean, her competition PR is 105 kilos. She did that at the Roma World Cup back in January. So this 108 is a great lift for her. She also just hit 135 kilos in the block clean. Again, this is five kilos over her competition best clean and jerk. So, I mean, amazing, amazing training at the moment from Maud. Down from Canada to the USA, and we have the 71 kilo world champion, Kate Nye, fighting for sets of 10 in the bat squat. At first, she hit 145. And then the other day she hit 150 for a set of 10. And it was an amazing fight, a huge fight. I think I have a memory that she did. I have a memory actually that she tried 155 for 10 on her last cycle and, and failed it. I could be slightly off there, but it might be possible that she tries to do it next time and, and gets it. I mean, that 150 was, I mean, that was straight RPE 10. But even so, uh, it's certainly possible for Kate Knight to do that. And then finally from the USA, Morgan McCullough, 17-year-old Morgan McCullough, I think, 96 kilo weightlifter. Uh, at 17, he just power jerked 200 kilos. He doubled 180 before that. He's since doubled 185, even attempted a 195 double. But that 200 is four kilos over the youth world record, which is, you know, incredibly impressive. So shout out to Morgan for that too. And then finally, before we get on to meme review slash the people's lifts, as is tradition, we now have from Brazil, Fernando Reis, who is going through a really a really strong looking uh, general prep phase, I suppose, of his training, perhaps his last really big one before the Olympics. He just hit 180 kilos for a power clean and three push press. Then he did 190 kilos for a power clean and three push press, which is, I mean, 190 for a triple and the push press is huge, never mind after, after a power clean. He did 120 kilos for a set of five in the muscle snatch. I really think we need to have a muscle snatch off. We need to get into one room. We need Fernando Reis. We need Lasha Talakadze. We need Alexei Lovchev. Maybe we should get someone like Mart Saim. I know he's not a puller and I know he's not a snatcher, but I just have a feeling he's a good muscle snatcher. Um, I would love to also get Saeed Ali Hosseini. Pull him out of retirement. He'd probably still win. He's just the strongest man of all time. Uh, we need to get them into a room and have a 1RM muscle snatch off. I think that'd be pretty good. And that, everybody, is the end of the bulk of the Weightlifting House news show. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let's do a let's do a meme review. Okay, as is now customary with the Weightlifting House news show, I will now do the weekly meme review. Editor Alex has sent me over a list of memes. I'm going to click on them. And we'll see what the uh, what the underbelly of the weightlifting world currently thinks right now. Okay, meme number one. This is by Weightlifties again. Weightlifters, when the $600 stimulus check hits their account and the balance is now 627.18. Rent, 08s. It's got to be the 08s. I mean, the 08s just hit kind of differently. 
if that's still what weightlifters are thinking, then then order is still is still there in the weightlifting world. Yeah, I actually have a pair of 08s. So I got them off vintage weightlifting, VTG underscore weightlifting underscore gear on Instagram. They actually just like this post, so that's why I, I recognized who they were. Um, the 08s hit different. You've got to get the 08s. Next, we have training make. Friendship ended with meh, so now me, so is my best friend. Yeah, so I get the name. So I was called Mezzo Mezzo, um, but it is actually Miso. And so I feel at this point now, if I just start calling him by Miso, as it's supposed to be, I'm going to get, I don't know, I just feel like it's going to be weird, even though that's the right way to do it. So I know I need to make the change, but I haven't yet. So Mezzo, I apologize. Uh, but from now on, I'm going to do my best to say Miso. Meme number three from The Gym Rat. Spending money on new video games and consoles, spending money for more food, gym gear, and supplements. You know, I don't I don't play video games. I've never had a games console, so I, I totally feel Drake on this one. I definitely like to spend the money that I do have on food. I like steak a lot. Gym gear, supplements, virus, discount code, weightlifting house. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Such a bad plug. <laughs> so shameless. Um, supplements, yeah, I totally feel that. Okay, next we have meme number four from Hard Aesthetics, me. Okay, so it's a picture of Jay Cutler looking looking huge. Me, after the gym, I'll be so active and fresh, I will do also some work that I've left. Me after the gym. I, yeah, I'm. it's funny because like, I've tried working out early in the day and then working after that because I always felt like it would pick me up and get me ready to work, but it actually never did. So... Um, I always felt like training after work was the best thing for me. So me and Jay have more than one thing in common, actually. Meme number five. This is also by training make, uh, training underscore make on Instagram. They got the game figured. All right, it's a video. I'm going to play the video. Uh, I like that a lot. That's that's the that's the laughter from that that famous interview with the guy. He's just cracking up all the time. We've got Chingiz. Chingiz always leaning on stuff because of his weight. He's always leaning. Interesting fact: Chingiz is the second heaviest weightlifter of all time. If you know the heaviest, comment down below, and uh, I will like it if you are right or if you just say something funny. But um, yeah, weight class is changing. Does not affect someone like Chingiz. It could be one hundred five plus. It could be one hundred fifty plus. It could actually be one hundred eighty plus. And for most of his career, Chingas would have been in the super heavyweight category. Okay, I'm excited. This is the last one. Uh, Weightlift D's again. Weightlift D's getting a lot of love over here from editor Alex. He says, okay, it's Shrek, everyone, Mezzo and Ritvas, the rest of their weight class. Now, what is happening here? I think this is a Star Wars meme. I'm not a Star Wars guy. I don't know why Shrek and Donkey are there. But, um... I think what it is is that Mezzo and Ripvas are escaping um, and the rest of the weight class is there to die. You know what, in terms of the attention that we give them, maybe, or oh, maybe it's a friendship thing. Maybe it's a friendship thing because Mezzo and Ripvas are good friends. I'm actually struggling to understand this one, um, but yeah, they are boys. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe the rest of the weight class want to be boys with them too. I don't know. So yeah, that was a decent meme. All right, I'm enjoying these memes, so I'm going to do one other one because I like memes that involve me because it, it strokes my ego in the right way. So Weightlifties also posted one, which is when it's December 31st and someone says, see you next year, and it's got the face of that kid. He's like, you know, that STFU kind of face, like, oh, very good, yeah, not funny, and he's eating an apple. And then there's me, and it says when it's December 31st and someone says, see you next year, and it's me pulling the same face. Now, here's the mystery to this post, if you want to know. This picture of me was taken on a disposable camera by my sister and isn't up on my Instagram page, it's not up on hers. I have no idea how the owner, and I don't know who it is, how the owner of Weightlifties got their hands on this photo. It is beyond me. So I commented down on it, I said, how the hell are you guys getting these pictures of me? Because I actually don't know at this point, but I do appreciate the meme. So um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed these seven memes uh, the Weightlifting House meme show. We do it every week, or trying to, on the Weightlifting House news show. So uh, if you enjoy it, then consider checking out the Weightlifting House news show. We have the people's lifts. A couple of reminders. One, coaches only. The greatest thing to ever happen for weightlifting coaches will be out and probably announced soon. 
two ten percent discount at everything over at weightliftinghouse.com not including bars and plates because we don't have them in yet but we will have them in soon and three discount code weightliftinghouse at virus international i think that's that's all of the stuff that i'm meant to be mentioning now black straps and black tape as well that's pretty cool so check that stuff out over to the people's lift we have ants taylor so it could be ants taylor or ant staler um no his name is anthony taylor so yeah it's Probably Anthony S. Taylor, I suppose. 230 kilo back squat. At 73 kilos, 20 kilo PR. <laughs> I mean, sometimes just all of the fortune goes to the brave. The person who squatted every single day of lockdown, which Anthony clearly did here, fortune favors the brave. So 20 kilo PR on the back squat is absurd, it's unfair, but it's probably deserved. So go check out a ridiculous squatter, Anthony Taylor at Ants Taylor on Instagram and S Taylor on Instagram. Next we have Kilos Anders. Kilo Sanders? Okay, so I again I'm having problems with these names. It's either Kilo Sanders or Kilos Anders or Kilos and Ers. Like Kathleen Kilos. Kilos and Ers. I don't know. 120 and 125 muscle snatch. 160 kilo thruster, almost thrusted 170. Crazily strong shoulders actually, because he catches this muscle snatch like it's not one of those legit ones where the elbows continue moving up. The elbows drop. The bar is almost like just resting, I suppose, on his clavicle. And he does uh, a snatch press from the front, <laughs> front essentially, with 125. So shout out to Kilos and Urs on Instagram. Next, we have my friend Bo. Bo underscore 89kg. I've got to shout him out again because, you know, he's so good. He just snatched 150. I'm really jacked up for him. Go follow Bo underscore 89kg. Then we have ZK Barbell and Fitness, Zach Nipple, that's K-N-I-P-P-E-L, 73 kilos, also 1 kilo PR in the snatch at the USAW December qualifier, he also hit clean and jerk PR, he's quite the weightlifting house fan I believe, so shout out to Zach for hitting those big lifts. Oh, he's also running a program that is based off the Glenn Pendley method, which is very cool. Uh, I did a podcast doing a full breakdown of the Glenn Penley Method over at patreon.com where I also just uploaded a 10-minute video of Mezzo and Ilya maxing out the snatch and Mezzo gets a PR in the power snatch and Ilya gets a PR in the hip snatch, so you can check that out. The book, Glenn Penley Method, 10% off at the moment also. So anyway, shout out to Zach Nipple for getting those PRs with those, yeah, those methods. And then finally, Quick Temper posted a video of the 77-year-old legendary coach John Thrush squatting 141 kilos this was a goal of his I think for a few months I know he's had a few surgeries recently as well uh, I hope he's recovering well it certainly looks like he is and I just thought this was so epic I mean when it, pe people just think that you can't weigh left forever but you really can John Thrush doing what he can he doesn't have the mobility to snatch right now he doesn't have the mobility to front squat right now but he's changed the way that he squats he's set a goal he's worked hard for it and he smashed 141, which is mad. Um, not sure he's going to squat double body weight again. He'd need 154. That's going to be tough. But, you know, it's not possible. I mean, it's, it's not impossible, I should have said. So anyway, huge shout out to John Thrush. Go follow him on Instagram as well and read all the stuff that he's ever written online. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's long episode of the Weightlifting House News Show. We're back. 2021 is here. It's going to be a big year for Weightlifting House. We have so many exciting things coming out, new products, stuff that people are going to honestly absolutely love, uh, market-changing products, I hope, as well as some really excellent uh, media-style stuff as well. So appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll catch you all on another episode of the Weightlifting House News Show. Mm -hmm.